Well, welcome to uh, Watercolor Studio 42. Uh, I might look a little different today. I forgot uh, where my apron ended up. <laughs> but that's okay. I guess we can get by without it. Uh, we'll see. Um, what I'm thinking about doing today is something about showing uh, kind of the uh, sunrise over the water. I haven't, seen, I, I haven't done a seascape in quite a while, so I thought I'd try uh, another one and, and uh, see how it turns out. Um, what I've been doing lately, I've been putting the tape like on the inside so that uh, it creates sort of a false uh, um, liner for my artwork. I don't have to worry about holding the mat up or whatever. I just pull the tape off and you can kind of see what the pa painting looks like with the, uh, that false liner or uh, a mat uh, around it. Okay, so anyways, I made a, a kind of a quick sketch here. Um, about all, uh, all of my uh, sketches are relatively quick because uh, I don't want to spend an, uh, an awful lot of time with the, um, the detail. Hopefully I can get most of the detail or whatever I want to put into the painting uh, done with the, um, with the brush rather than just spending too much time. So what I've got here is uh, I've got kind of like a, a little bit of a, a Z type of a composition. I've got the sun over in here. You can have this like a sunrise, um, and actually the sun, uh, in this case, could probably be more or less the focal point. Um, I decided I'd leave out a lighthouse and other buildings uh, today. So um, it's going to be kind of an open painting. I even left out the, the consideration of maybe having a boat going by, a uh, sailboat coming into the painting or whatever. But uh, uh, so uh, I've got some land uh, over or on this side, and then I've got some more uh, land, uh, rocks and so forth. And the waves are going to be coming in, hitting, uh, coming in from the uh, right and hitting the, uh, the rocks on the left. So somewhere out here, I'm going to have the sun. And it can be sort of a, sometimes you have to decide whether you want a sunset or a sunrise, but whatever it turns out looking like, closer, closer to, if you will, uh, that's what I will call it. So having said that, we'll get started right in. I always start with a, a larger brush and uh, and kind of put a wash in, wet the paper a little bit up here. And if I'm doing an outdoor painting, uh, a landscape and so forth, or a seascape, I always start with the sky at the top, and uh, that kind of sets up the, the uh, condition of the weather that day, <clears throat> whether it's overcast day, sort of a storm building up or whatever. So just I'm dashing in, uh, some water and the sky is going to be quite quite orangey uh, We'll put a base color of some yellow in and I'm going to come in really quite brilliant today with the, some of the color I've been finding lately that I've been a little bit easing up on you know my, my color and so uh, when I look at it after You know it dries out well uh, my paintings have been fading quite a bit, so I have to kind of rework them a little bit and perk them up. So we got the sky cutting across here, and um, then I'm going to put just a little dash of red into the yellow so that we get sort of a, an, an orange effect. And then um, in the picture that, that I'm working from, this calendar picture, uh, there's uh, some blue. But the blue is sort of like a, a, a double blue. Uh, it's more like a um, deeper type of blue, uh, bluish purple, if you will, or grayish, if, if you will. So that's going to be a cross over in here. And ends up over in the right-hand corner. So that's going to be in, in the upper atmosphere. That yellow is really coming in like... Uh, Pretty, pretty wild, but you know, so a lot of times you start off, you, you think that that looks a little bit too light, 
But by the time you get through, by the time it dries out and everything else, it, it, it doesn't turn out that way. Now, my sky is kind of acting up a little bit. It's almost like, like it's one giant um, aurora borealis here, the way the colors are working. Uh, but anyways, we, we'll get that in. Now, I can't let this set too long because I've got to uh, make sure that I take a paper towel and I'm going to block where that sun is actually located. So I take a paper towel, kind of wrap it around my forefinger here, and just press right into here. Sometimes I use a um, um, cotton swab. See how that lightens up? And I'm going to try to make that soft around there, more of a, more of a circle. Let's see if I can get that shaped up a bit. Okay, I've taken some of that out of there. But I want that to be, be kind of a little bit more of a, a glow right around in this area here, right around, the, uh, right around in that area. See how that turns out. So everything's kind of soft around it for the most part. And uh, you've got that yellow glow coming around. This paper is really working kind of tech. The, sometimes the grain of the paper is uh, kind of textural and it gives you that special effect really that you, you, could, you couldn't possibly paint it that way. You know, like that, something like this. And sometimes, make, uh, if I can find a clean spot on my paper towel, I'm just going to hit it right up in here again, kind of lighten up a, a, an area right up in there for the, um, the sun. Yeah, there we go, something like that. If I can get that a little bit picked up, I'm trying to copy the picture more, the photograph. Yeah. That looks pretty good, pretty good. We'll see how it looks uh, a little bit later uh, after we dry out. I'm gonna get a little bit more uh, pink. Let's get some pink down in here, right across from there. Boy, that looks pretty good. If it stays that way. All right, and just a little bit more pink over on the other side here, pull it, pull it across over there. There you go. Yeah, it's working out pretty well. I'll just touch up right up in there. Whoops. <laughs> See if I can blend that down a little bit, soften it out. Yeah. Get that a little... Uh, oh, yeah, that's looking good. Now, I... I've probably mentioned several times before, I work from sometimes some uh, calendar pictures or postcards and whatnot, and I kind of use them as a reference, but you can't say that I can copy it exactly. You know, I don't try to act like a f camera taking a picture here. I just kind of use, use that as a reference when I'm working. If it looks okay, I kind of leave it. I can always come back and touch it up if I have to. Or it looks looks like it needs some work. But I'm not going to spend too much more time with that. Oh, it's coming along pretty good. I think I'm going to leave a little brighter spot, though, just down in here, right, right across over in here. Uh, put back some of that yellow. Get that yellow, that's, that's a bright little spot across the sky in there. Yeah, something like that. Now, as we come down, as we come down, uh, we've got to locate uh, where the, um, the sky ends and, and we pick up the, the ground. So I'm going to work this down a little bit, just put some color into here and have this drop. Keep that open, that's supposed to be the ocean, but looking off over the ocean, the ocean looks kind of level, so you have to get this filled in fairly straight. 
right across through here. That's probably the line of the ocean back there. This has got to be actually land, um, a projection of land here. And I'm going to have eventually something coming back into over here and uh, possibly, let's see, this shape here, sort of a medium shape, and this is going to be a little bit larger. So just, I'm just going to indicate w w where I'm going with this. Something like that. So this is a big shape. It's going to be a big shape off here. This is going to be uh, sort of a, another projection. And the water is coming in here, and I'm going to try to get the spray coming up over the, hitting the rocks, not over, but hitting the rocks, and sort of bouncing back. Let's see if I can touch that up right in here, sort of soften that out. There you go. Right where the spray is going to go, right up in that area there. Okay, now, the rest of this is going to be kind of, Oh, a little bit of uh, white water kind of swishing through and so it's going to be something like this all right oh by the way <laughs> looks like my my son over here has a dent so i gotta gonna pick that up if i can before it dries too much there there you go that's better uh, that happens sometimes when your paper's kind of flat on the table Okay, so we're going to have some white water uh, water coming into here, and um, I'm just going to suggest where that's going to be working its way in around the rocks, something like that. Yeah, just to, just to kind of decide what, what I want to do with this. Now. Um, I don't want to have the, uh, sun. the sun is a little bit to the uh, right of center. I want the spray to be a little bit to the left of center. So actually we're sort of working, I kind of think of it as a Z shape, uh, the movement of the water, you know, how it c comes in. So let's see if I, that can be uh, accomplished here. Take a little bit of this out. Yeah, that's good. All right. My, set, my son's setting out there, it's, it keeps changing a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to just see if I can take, take that and smooth it around so it, not so much water, maybe it will dry, dry out better in one spot. Um, I may have to change that a little bit. I can always move it with the sun around, I guess. <laughs> see what I can do with it. Now, um, Let's see. Uh, oh, I want to have some uh, some of these hard rocks come in. Now, sometimes I use uh, my very dark brown. It's called um, sepia, and usually I can use a, a um, that darker color uh, when uh, it's more or less in the shadow. So, and what's going to be up here is the rocks are going to be lighter because. Uh, the, the sun is going to be sh uh, shining on them, so we can work it like this. See how I can lighten it up here, but down in this area, I can keep this dark in this corner. Now, what I like to do a lot of times, um, I've showed people uh, a little bit what I do sometimes. I take a, a, a sharp object, it can be a, like a razor blade, or you can use any anything that you have that's uh, like a credit card. If I can pick one out of here. Uh, uh, yeah, I think I've got a little piece of something. Yeah, that's good. Okay, this happens to be a little piece of a plastic credit card. But what I do is I pull that through here uh, while the pa paint is wet. So you can kind of push the paint around a little bit make that more like a, a rocky texture so it's not one solid shape but so that's what I do with that sometimes now if I don't like that particular shape I can always change that by putting the paint back okay that's how that works now I don't like this little stubby shape over here so I can um, change that a little bit 
just pull that down a little bit like that, more to a point, and then uh, come back up in here. Again, if I don't like what I've done with the uh, piece of plastic pushing and pulling that around, I can always change that and make, make it look like uh, another shape of rock. You can also use the edge of your credit card to sort of score, cut into your watercolor paper. And so when you do that, a lot of times, it makes sort of like a, a, a very thin, sharp edge. You know how the rocks sometimes have cracks in them and whatnot. So that's what this is all about. Now that's a lot, uh, I, I can do a little bit more with this texture. If I like it, I, I just don't keep it, um, working over it. Something like that. Keep it lighter up here where the sun's coming in. That looks, looks, it looks pretty good the way that is. Now, I can do the same thing um, with uh, some rocks off over here. But the, the thing is, those rocks are setting back a little further. You might not see as much uh, detail or definition in them. Um, you could do something like this. Um, again, keep in mind where the light source is coming from. So the, the top part of the rock is going to be a little bit lighter. So having said that, I'm just going to lift some of that out with a brush. Yeah, you can make that a little bit uh, darker. D uh, when you're going to go darker, though, you're going to go down, let's see, around the bottom. Right in there, like I did on this side. And if you want, you could, have, you could put a few little cuts in the rock if you want with uh, your credit card. I call it a credit card always as, as a cut-up credit card, uh, so you can re refer to it as a, a piece of plastic. <laughs> but uh, you can make all sorts of little marks, score this, put some texture back here if you want, the way the rocks are, make them look a little bit more jagged. The paint settles in where you uh, uh, rub it on the surface. You make this a little lighter here still. Well, it's still wet. Now let's go over here and do the similar idea over off on this uh, projection of rock. Now, is this the main coast? The um, the rocks are very jagged. Um, it's uh, very, you know, um, sharp edges and so forth. And so, you wouldn't want to be out there in a storm and bump into some of these shapes. You'd be a little bit sore. Okay, let's come down here, do a little bit of that edge. I can go off the paper, off, the, off, the, off into the tape because we're gonna take the tape off. Coming back here, do, let's put a little bit darker color into here, into this corner, something like that. Uh, let's see what else. I think I've got to go darker here. I want to get it dark like that side. Let's put something really almost paint, not as much water. You can do something like that. Put that back in there. However, uh, let's uh, see if I can use my little plastic piece of plastic here. Kind of cut into this, break it up a little bit more. Just put some kind of scratches in there. And uh, I don't know if this, this needs anything else out there. Maybe, maybe oh, this edge could be a little bit more jagged there. But it's, it's sort of almost like, in a way, it's almost like magic the way you can kind of put these shapes in. This is kind of getting a little bit speckly and textured through here. It has a lot to do with the paper sometimes, what the paper is. I always use, uh, this is Waterford Sand, it's 140 cold press, and uh, I've, I've had good luck with it, so. I uh, used to use, uh, a lot of times I'd use that, the Archers, that's good paper. That used to be the uh, paper, you know, the most popular, 
And as far as colors go, it always used to be Windsor Newton. But you know, there's a lot of um, companies that are coming out with paints now, and uh, they've improved upon the, you know, the quality of the paint. So it's kind of close as far as some of the brands go. And uh, so you have to try the paint. The paint looks okay. And uh, the price is right. You know, it seems like anything that you buy, um, you know, that's, uh, that's uh, art supplies today, everything, the markup is very high. And uh, so you have to find, like everything else, I guess the best deal that you can get as far as pa the uh, paper goes. Okay, just adding a little bit of definition, a little bit of detail up in, the, in up in this area. Now I got to see what I can do with this open part here. Um, I want that the waves to be coming in uh, pretty strong, so that wave is going to be hitting that that rock. So let's see if I can get some. Uh, something built up through here, you know, something that's a little bit stronger. It's going to be splashing up. That's a little bit bright. It's all right for the um, base color. But I'm just trying to get this, how it's going to be reacting in the air. And that spray is going to become hitting up in there. Um, what I do a lot of times, I take a or you could take like a uh, bottle, something like this, and it's like a little atomizer, and it kind of can break up that, uh, some of that uh, color. But I'm going to put some of that out. It's going to be way up into here. Bring it around, kind of curl it a little bit. And uh, bring this out into here. This is going to be sort of quite a bit of white water, too, coming in here. It's going to be kind of rough along the coast here, along the rocks. I'm going to put that in. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to have to come in. I'm going to be a little bit darker with that. So I'm taking some of that uh, blue and try some Payne's Gray into that, see what happens. If that's gonna do anything to it, quiet that some of that blue down. I don't want it to be too much, but you got to get that, you know, the movement, the uh, force of the water coming up. And sometimes you can kind of dry brush it, you know, have a not as much uh, paint on the brush, water, and I just kind of make that spray go up. Kind of like a flare to it. That's sort of a, quite a wet area there. I might not be able to do too much with that right now, other than <laughs> not touch it. Okay, maybe I can kind of quiet that down and blur that down. That's looking pretty good though. It's kind of natural. A lot of strength in it. Um, might make it a little bit more transparent by pulling some of the color out like that. That's a pretty strong spray. I like the dry brush effect that you can get. And of course, when you're going, uh, like I'm painting a little bit into the, uh, the yellow, so you're kind of getting a, an interesting color uh, of uh, sort of a greenish color, like the uh, salt water would be. So let's do some work in here now. See what else I can do. I'll take that speck out of there. I might put it back in later. Now there's got to be a lot of white water kind of sloshing in in this area here. So I'm just going to work around that a bit. And uh, I'm not crazy about how the sun came out. I have to. I might get back to that before we finish up. See what else I can do with that. Um, so you're going to have some little dark areas. You're going to have some dark around up in here. 
okay? You can leave some of this a little bit, sort of a white water coming through here because it's going to be kind of rushing in. Now, when I paint a lot of times, um, water is constantly moving, so uh, you have to kind of just paint uh, your emotions about the water, uh, how rough you want it to be, uh, how much spray and so forth that you have. And so you, you can't really um, do it exactly, but you can make it more suggestive, uh, like um, kind of like uh, from memory. But uh, now off here, off in the distance, right up in there somewhere, that's going to be kind of appear to be level. That's going to be straight across, flatter. Um, and then uh, we can p pick this right up, carry it right out to the edge. Uh, not to the edge as much, but over to where the, where the rocks are. Now, if you, if you want uh, the rocks to be a little bit higher, I just come back in like this with uh, some of my paints gray. Just elevate the rocks up a little bit higher into there. So you can see how that works. It's looking halfway decent. Now what I'm doing, um, I, I'm being a little bit daring. Uh, I'm a little bit stronger than normal. Usually I start out a painting, you know, I'm very cautious. I start very light and then build up. And uh, uh, today what, what I'm doing is throwing caution more to the wind, I guess, and just letting it kind of come in a little bit darker. Not, not trying to overwork anything, just kind of let it do its thing and uh, leaving a little bit of contrast of light and so forth coming in. Um, I'm going to dash this up in here a little bit more. Kind of dry brush it, see, see how you can get that effect. Now sometimes I'll use, um, I can use uh, some uh, speckle. Sometimes I, I'll take uh, and uh, put a little paint on um, the brush. And that you can hold a ruler or a pencil or anything like that. And you can just do a little bit of texture around here. Just tap this a little bit to get some of the specks of water. Get that effect in there. You don't want to overdo it. The specks are a little bit large there. So what I'm going to do, let's take a clean piece of towel here. And uh, I'm going to pick up some of those specks. I don't want them to be that that large or noticeable. So you can kind of pull those back in or whatever, paint them out with a spray. Yeah, see how you can kind of stipple around with the brush and kind of take some of that texture out. This can be more white water out in there. Now, what I have to be careful of is I make the ocean line right across here a little bit straighter. I think What's happening here is I'm going uphill. So I've got to take, sometimes I just put a ruler down and just paint along that. Um, do the same thing, I guess, with the pencil. Let's see what happens. Use the pencil just to get that edge straighter out there. Okay, right across through here. Boom, that's it. See how straight that is? And then you pull it back down. Yeah, that looks better. Turn the board around again here. And if you want, you can carry that over a little bit off and on this side. Again, just keep it straight and just pull that collar back down. Something like that. Um, right to the edge of the tape. You don't want to stop before you get to the edge of the tape. Just pull it right out. and. Uh, that kind of fills that in. Now, how much I want to do in here, um, sometimes I'll give this a little bit more, break this up a little bit more, and uh, maybe make the color blue lighter. Let's see, 
my brush is a little bit dry. I want to just kind of wiggle some water through that. Give it a little bit more texture. And uh, so it's coming out pretty good. I don't like right here. Uh, it, see, they're all about the same height. So what I'm going to do, um, put a little blue on the brush here, and I want to pull maybe this one up a little higher like that. Just really make it look like it's really hitting high in there. But you have to be careful. You don't get carried away with too much. That's a little bit heavy there. Let's see if I can pull that out more. Yeah. And sometimes the water starts to turn. It starts to curl a little bit that way. Um, when you see pictures a lot of time of uh, seascape, usually that's a lot of white water. And here I am uh, filling it in with a lot of blue. Now, if I wanted to get some white, whiter color back, I could take probably clean the brush off a little bit and just pull some of that out. See how you can lighten some of that out. It is lighter in there, but I could do almost more so with that. Now what's going to happen is all of this is going to uh, dry much lighter overnight, but at least it's dark, dark enough. So probably if it does dry lighter, it's not going to be that light. Let's just pull some of this off. I'll break it back down into here more, cut it back into here more. There you go, that's better. You don't want everything kind of stopping uh, too soon. Now you can put a little spatter up there if you want. I started to do a little bit of that earlier, yeah. Just put a little bit of spray. I, I think what I was doing before, I had a little bit too much paint on the brush. Just break that up a little bit. You can use white too if you want, um, just white acrylic paint. If you want to put some of the white back into it, like uh, the aeration of the water. So that's working pretty good. Now sometimes you can spend hours and hours uh, trying to get the effect that you're looking for. But uh, I've kind of hit it pretty good um, uh, a little bit sooner than I normally would. I want to take some of that out, erase that a bit. Just make it look more like a spray. Then to make it look like a spray, I just take away some of the uh, the, the brown color because now now it's softer, so it's, it, it appears that you're looking through that spray, and you can see you know the rock and in back of that. Just have to clean it up a little bit. Um, it looks pretty good. I, I got to it fast today, really fast. <laughs> okay. There we are. I probably had plenty of time I could have put a, a lighthouse out there. But I'm, I'm not going to do too much with that other than to make this look like a little bit of mist. I take some of that, want to take that out of there, erase it, um, and just pull it up into here to make it look like more of, of the mist lifting off of the water. Like something like that. You have to sometimes spend some time uh, to reactivate that color. Uh, blue is a stainer. It's a tough color, sometimes to work with. But there it goes. Look like a, uh, something off, like the you know, sort of like a mist out there. Now I want to get back. Um, what I want to do here is I want to get back up into that sun. Uh, I'm not crazy about how that turned out, so I'm going to try to get this sort of more of a circle in there. Like this, just keep working that, reactivate the color. And uh, looking at that picture, maybe take it, make it a little bit lighter in here. Uh, 
pull this around here. Then you keep rotating around till you get a good halfway decent circle. Something like that. Then I need uh, I need to take a paper towel, see if I can uh, block that in there and lighten it up. I haven't had too much luck so far to get that lighter. I'm going to try to see if I can loosen this up more here. Okay, then come in. You could use a Q-tip too if you want. Pull some of that out of there. I don't know if that looks any better or not, but uh, might have to do something with it around it. Sometimes you have to get a little bit fussy, pull something back away from it. The water came out beautiful, almost like magic. I don't know if that's going to work or not. Better than it was. Lighten up into here. Yeah, that's looking better. The effect I'm looking for. Um, so uh, now, having said all of that, if the if the uh, sky is that light, what happens a lot of times? It's going to reflect somewhat on the water. So you might see just a hint of a little bit of uh, the color of the sky coming in here. You just uh, It's going to be soft, but it's going to be in there. When the sky is that bright, it's got to have some effect on the water. You might see a little bit off here. Get that line. I, I used a pencil to straighten that line out. Now, if that doesn't look right off there, I can make that look like another landform if that doesn't quite look like mist. Mist has to be very soft. Yeah. See if I can soften that up. No. Still doesn't look quite, quite right. Sometimes I can come back with a little bit of a stronger yellow up here. Hide some of the pencil. Sometimes when you draw these things, oh, I, that's looking good. See how the, uh, the, the light's coming through the water here? That's kind of interesting how that just works that way. Because I was painting uh, the, um, I pushed the blue up into uh, the, um, the wet um, yellow, so you get that sort of a transparent appearance. Uh, now this is blurring off here. I don't know if I can clean that up or not. I may end up making that like a, a, a maybe a, some land off there uh, if I have to. Maybe some yellow back into that area would help. Just a little bit more yellow. Pull that out. Look, that might help. Now it's kind of mixing in with the blue, so you get sort of a bluish effect, you know, across there. That might be a little bit too too uh, too much uh, yellow. So what I do is take that and kind of push that back up into here kind of pull it out. And uh, you can bring that across, gives this a little bit more uh, body, more color over in this area. So you get that sort of effect. Now, if I was, <coughs> excuse me, if I was gonna add anything else, like uh, put a, a bird or something, uh, I wouldn't do it right right soon because um, the sky might be uh, still wet and I'm trying to put this fussy little bird in there and what's going to happen is it's going to get all fuzzy. It's going to blur. Now I don't like the way that's 
ended up there. So that's easy enough. I'll just take this, push this up higher, make the rock kind of come out this way. And uh, that color, uh, dark color, this dark color down here counterbalances what we see off over in here. You can put this go out into the water a little bit more, but still you have to be careful because that might still be wet, so that's going to blur. I can make that look like more of the spray here uh, from the, uh, the ocean wave hitting. That could be kind of fuzzed out. Um, I, I, I'm going to kind of clean up this area right in through here. That doesn't look quite right, so I'm just going to fill that in more. Maybe uh, put some more blue into that. And maybe a little bit of paint gray into, into the blue. That might make it a little bit darker. And bring that right back to the rocks, in back of the rocks, like this. Okay. The sky off here, I kind of cleaned it up a little bit better. Probably by the time it dries tomorrow, it's not going to be that noticeable. It's going to look like a mist coming in off the water. Okay. It still kind of gets a little, still a little fuzzy there, though. Maybe we could sort of take some of that out. Clean that up a bit. Uh, sometimes I, I, I do put some, um, I can put some, uh, you know, seagulls or something flying around, but not right now because this, I know the sky might be still wet and I'd get a sort of a fuzzy looking seagull. Let's put this out into here. I'm going to change the. I'm, I don't like the uh, the shape of the rocks there. It's too, it's too close to the uh, the water. So, so what I do sometimes is uh, take and blot this real good, and uh, uh, just have the the uh, ocean water cut cut into that and that. The, uh, the blue will just clean that up out there. So you just hide some of that. You don't need that. This is noticeable because I got paint on the tape, but I think it should be all right when I pull the tape. I'm just going to lighten that rock up there a little bit on the top because the sun's hitting it. So we can take some of that out of there. See how that works? Yeah, pretty good. You know, I, I still think that's a little smudgy off there. If I can make the blue darker and hide some of that. Just kind of clean that up across there. And finish off maybe this side. Pull that out straighter to the edge. See how that's still smudgy, son of a gun. All right, here we go. What I'm probably trying to do is um, I'm trying to paint into it while it's still too wet. And that's what happens. Let's see if I can soften that in, blend that out. So it's more transparent, the, the, that uh, uh, wave. I don't like it. Looks a little bit heavy there. I, could, I don't like the shape of it, so I pull that out. Take it out of there. And just make, have this go off softer. Kind of up into there. Kind of fade away. This is still uh, smudgy across there. Now, if you still have that problem, um, I just have to let that really dry, and then I can come back and uh, make that smooth that out. But if I keep trying to paint over it, it's not, I'm not letting it dry, so it just stays kind of blurry like that. 
and push some of that back up in there and just sort of just have it disappear, fade away. Take some of this out, fade away, have that fade away more. Okay. It's, the uh, sun looks all right now, a little bit. Finally got it, got it up to, uh, looking the way I wanted it to look like. This looks kind of blank down in here. I can take some of my uh, brown and just just kind of cut it back up in there and make more uh, shadow in the rocks like this. See how you can break that up and push that up into here more. Make it more like a like a ledge. I don't like that shape there. Let's see if I can erase some of that. Take some of that out of there. So it's not so noticeable. There you go. Now, um, for the most part, is you can always get a little bit fussy with it. You know, you can kind of break this up, make a, like another boulder up there or something, um, some, some more texture. But for the most part, um, it's probably pretty well done. Uh, what I just did there, sometimes you could keep the, the top part of that uh, sort of a hard edge, but then down here, just soften that away, just blend it down, take some of that edge out of off there so you don't have it sort of a isolated shape. Sometimes if I'm too too quick, I kind of can clean up on this a little bit more. Uh, but for the most part, I think we're pretty well squared away. Uh, if that looks too too dull there, I'm just going to put a little bit more of that blue into that, that area. Like that. Maybe break this up a little bit. Take some of the edge away. Put some color back into the white. That's the white of the paper. Uh, whether I want this to be that white, I can tame that down a little bit with some softer, softer blue. So um, for the most part, I think it looks all right. Let's make this a little darker down here on the edge. Push that back up. This has got to be have a. You know, when the rocks are wet, they, they, they uh, appear to be a little darker. Down near the bottom, they're usually, there's more uh, moisture there. There you go. Okay, so for the most part, I might just add a couple more sprinkles in there. I have to be careful. Yeah, I get carried away sometimes with too much sprinkle. Just a little bit. Whoops. Yeah, I don't want too, too many big specks there. Let's take some of those out. Yeah. Yeah, just pull, pull, pull. Soften that out, soften this one out. There. Yeah. Yeah, the speckles I'm going to ease off, let this dry, and I want, I'd like to have that edge uh, that's over here, smooth over here, but I don't know if that's going to happen right away. It still keeps getting blurry there. And you pull some of that color down into here. Like I said, if you keep working on it while it's wet, it's just going to start keeping muddy. muddy. <coughs> Excuse me. Wow. Must be allergic to my painting here, huh? There we go. And maybe a little darker speck in there. See what that does. That's okay. Right, something like that. Uh, right up against a rock. I'll pull it back out. Over here in the corner, that could be a little bit darker. 
you, you want to have some color um, right against uh, the tape so that uh, when you pull the tape off, you won't see a white spot there, white ends of white. Um, that's still a little bit uh, sort of a, looks like some uh, mist lift, 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 uh, you're lifting off the water. So anyways, I think it's okay to pull the tape. I pulled the tape on a 45 degree angle so not to damage the uh, watercolor paper. Take it off like that. Now, um, see if I can go across the bottom here. That tape comes in handy. I use it a lot um, for um, saving the white, putting some little patches of uh, tape on my paper sometimes, especially when I do birch trees. Now you see how that, that if you put a real mat on that, how that would kind of clean up all those edges? It looks halfway decent when you do that. Oh boy, that's a toughie. There you go. So that's how that comes out. Now, what I'm going to do, um, there's always a little touch up things. Right, see in there? Oh, wow. I want to clean that up a little bit more. I'm going to make that look like it's a darker piece of rock in there. See if I can get that, pull that out. Kind of, kind of accent that corner over here. Pull that back into here. That's about it for that. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> wow. When you sneeze, sometimes you get a little bit froggy. There you go, something like that. Now, um, I'm not, I'm not going to do it with the paint. But what I do after this would would uh, be dry, I, I kind of put some birds in the, like a, like a, a seagull flying off there. Uh, maybe something in here. And maybe a third something over here. Kind of just put some things in the sky, you know. Uh, makes it look okay. So that's it um, pretty much for today. And uh, you can get a look at it. So, like I said, sometimes things fall into place a little bit easier than others. Sometimes you'll try to get the spray and it just doesn't work right. Uh, normally I leave a little bit more uh, white water uh, in the, the spray. But that ca this came out okay today. It looks, looks pretty good. This is a little bit fuzzy off here. Um, that can be fixed up. I noticed I had a little bit of a run. I probably should have left the uh, the uh, tape on longer and let the paper dry. But, however, sometimes you can take something like that, and what I do is wash it out with uh, clean water, uh, hit it with a clean piece of paper towel, and I can make that corner kind of lighten up quite a bit. Yeah. You don't see where I have a little bit of paint that ran, and it's going to keep running if I keep holding it this way. Um, but I touched up that corner so you, you don't notice that. But sometimes if the paint goes off the paper or goes the wrong way, uh, what you have to do is just come back and uh, kind of catch it and touch it up um, before it gets uh, too far. Um, when I use white, uh, I use white acrylic paint. I don't use. They do have a, a white uh, that they call Chinese white uh, watercolor, and they do have a, 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 what they call an opaque watercolor called gouache. It has a little bit of white in it, so that that hides things a little bit better that, with that too. So that's about it for today, and uh, thanks for being with us. And uh, we'll see you next time. Oh, I do want to mention uh, a little bit about um, uh, 
the next thing coming up, the next event for the city, of course, and they'll be advertising it. They have signs around it. So the Winter Festival. And uh, we're already moving into February. And uh, so the uh, festival is going to be the 22nd. It's on a Saturday, and I guess the rain date is the following day, Sunday. But that's the 22nd, so that's coming up. Um, I'll be probably over at the uh, Attleboro Arts Museum. Um, I'll have my little booth over there. Uh, and uh, so if you do happen to take in the uh, Winter Festival uh, and stop into the museum, say hi. And uh, I'd uh, be happy to hear from you, see, see what your opinions are and what uh, you'd like to have me paint. Uh, some other time. I, I kind of specialize in watercolors for the most part. So what I always say, brushes up and thanks a lot for being with us. <laughs>